Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. We are joined by a special guest, Mr. Reagan, yeah. Christopher Patrick Coles. Thank you for being here, Mr. Thank Reagan. Uh, I just feel really special that we know your we know your name. <laughs> yeah, you do know my real name. Yeah, yeah, you know your name. You're not just Mr. I'm Reagan. Just, in fact, Reagan isn't even part of my real name at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have uh, Chad Prather back with us today. Yeah, it's been, been a while. Time. I worried that you were boycotting our show. Never, it's been so never. long. So good to have you back. Stu, you're okay, too. Mm. What's your tough story? Oh, yeah, I'll buy for you, sir. Thank you very much. Gee whiz. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about sneakers. We haven't talked about sneakers uh, in a long sneakers, time. Yeah. It's not an American flag, so we're going sneaker talk mm -hmm. today. <laughs> okay, Chad. I want to talk about sneakers, too, but it's the kind that are trying to get across the border. <laughs> and, uh, oh, our, I see. Our lovely Congress uh, woman from New York took a little visit down with some other congressional members, and what they found is astounding. Mm. All right, and Chris. Well, I would like to talk about Andy Ngo and what happened with Antifa, mm -hmm. because I am from Oregon, and to me, I, it's just a tragedy what's happening up there. Yeah, I cannot like, wait to get, your, to get your perspective, because it, it truly is astounding how yeah. quickly uh, they've gone down, downhill. Uh, first, we want to thank our sponsor, American Financing. So if you are looking for you know, maybe a home refi or a home loan, uh, whatever the case may be, American Financing is your go-to. Um, they have, as we've pointed out many times on the show, they have salary-based professionals, not commission-based. So what that means for you is the people you're dealing with are not looking for the kickback from the financial institution when they're trying to uh, d decide what mortgage, uh, what interest rate, all of those things, what's going to be right for you, which is key, I feel, to, uh, to choosing uh, a professional, a finance professional. Yeah, well, you have someone you can depend on. It's the biggest financial transaction you'll probably ever make. No pressure. Oh, so don't screw it up. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Um, Stu, I know, uh, dealt with them, and they walked you through everything, answered your questions. Didn't make you feel stupid, right? Because yeah. I feel really stupid when, yes. I, when I go through mortgages and home loans. Yeah, you feel really dumb when you're doing a mortgage and when you're buying jewelry, because you feel like the jewelry <laughs> yeah. store is yeah. just like, they could sell you anything. I mean, it yeah. could be tinfoil, and you have no idea whatsoever. <laughs> Kind of the same thing with mortgages, I feel like. So American Financing, they'll walk you through everything. They'll, they will answer all the questions that you have. They will put you in something. They will put you in, in a loan that is reasonable and right for you. You can go to AmericanFinancing.net or you can call 800-906-2440. All right, sneakers. Sneaker talk. Yes. Uh, so we were told back in the day when people were kneeling on the NFL fields mm -hmm. that they were not kneeling because of the flag. They were kneeling because of what they were protesting. In fact, I think we have a couple of examples of this. Uh, I think Don Lemon is one of our examples. Uh, here's Don telling us what these protests were actually about. Taking a knee at an NFL game was never about the flag never. or mm. the military. Nope. That's what the president wants you to believe. Mm. It gives his insulting sons of bitches comment cover. A comment that not only insults hardworking professional men, but tries to drag their mothers oh, down God. to his level oh, as God. well. Taking a knee is, is a constitutionally <laughs> protected e expression. It falls within league rules, period. If anyone actually believes this is about the flag, mm. then you must believe Rosa Parks' protest was about a bus. Oh, that's oh, exactly okay. the same thing. It's almost <laughs> identical. Mm -hmm. Now, one way that you can make sure people don't think it's about the flag is to do it at any other time <laughs> except the national anthem. You could do it right as they're about to kick off. You could do it before the game, after the game. You could do it at a million different times, but somehow people got confused. I think they should do it right in the middle of a play. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. If they're the Cowboys, I'm I was just going to say the Eagles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another example. This one's from Fox Sports 1. Are you angry about the protests because you think it's disrespecting the flag? Mm. Or, or are you angry about what is being protested? Mm. Mm. Because if Colin Kaepernick, who started this whole thing, mm. when he was asked, why are you not standing for the anthem? He had said, I'll be honest with you, I think no one protects that flag more than our soldiers. And I do not think our soldiers treated fairly when they come back to this country. They do not have adequate health care. They do not have adequate benefits. They do not have adequate job opportunities. And until they get that, I'm not standing for the anthem. Would you still be mad? Because you'd be disrespecting the flag just the same way. It would still be a, a pick a different time would be the easiest uh, way to do that. And at least there'd be a little bit more factual basis to that particular uh, arrangement. Uh, but this is a bizarre thing because we were told it was not about the flag. And yet, 
here we go. Now Colin Kaepernick, who apparently is running Nike, uh, they come out with <laughs> shoes that have a flag on it, yeah. and somehow Colin Kaepernick actually has the power uh, to recall all of these <laughs> shoes because the flag is so controversial. Um, I, I mean, for a guy who barely could throw more touchdowns <laughs> and interceptions in his career, it's a very strange power he has over Nike. Um, and so, and this is the Betsy Ross flag, mm -hmm. which is, uh, it, you know, this is, I guess it's anything with stars and stripes on it is a problem for Colin. Yeah. We now see that this obviously was about the flag. Uh, but next, like, when did this flag become this racial symbol? Well, BuzzFeed has solved this one for us. They say, in recent years, the flag has been used for political purposes, including by white nationalists. Uh, <laughs> Here's their what? evidence. A 2018 story by The Outline noted the flag was on display in the home of a white nationalist group. Oh. Uh, a, a member of a white nationalist group. Here's the, the legitimately one of the pieces of evidence they have. This is what it says. This is the quote. Paul messaged me that he was ready. He appeared to be in his mid-20s. His hair was short and parted to the side just like mine. A Betsy Ross era American flag hung on the wall behind him. That's that's that is one of their two pieces of evidence. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm pretty yeah, sure I heard once a white supremacist say two plus two is four. <gasps> oh my oh. gosh, are you serious? So if you believe oh. that two plus two is four, you're a racist. You must be a white supremacist. Mm. I've always I think believed that's, math was racist, <laughs> right? Math. Uh, yeah, I think they've actually, said, they've actually said, said that. Somebody that one. has said that. Yeah. So Nike, Nike's an Oregon-based company, right? See, Oregon, yes, Oregon's yeah. going straight to hell. I, yes, know. The deal. I am so sorry, you guys. Let's build the wall <laughs> on the southern fault. border, but let's go. Uh, like, I'll help lay the bricks around Oregon These right now. People. And there's good people These in Oregon. People. There really are. I, I was on I the promise. Are there still? Are there still? There are. There's not in Portland. Okay. <laughs> they live sort okay. of on the outskirts. That's fair. Uh, we're going to give you one more piece of evidence here. This is uh, in 2016. So 2018 and 2016, apparently no examples in 2017 or this year. But they go to 2016 because of a high school. Do we have the picture from the high school? This is going to show you how racist this is. White supremacists, basically. Uh, that is legitimately their other piece of evidence. There is a flag, the Betsy Ross flag, next to a Trump flag. Which apparently oh, the school wow. actually apologized for, oh, for having goodness. the two next to each other, which is what? incredible. How dare we acknowledge that the president exists? I know, <laughs> I know. Um, amazing. Yeah. And so it's, it's interesting because, of course, now they probably will start finding other examples of this because they're now, we'll be looking for them and become a self fulfilling prophecy eventually. Uh, but this was never about the flag. That, that, that whole line was a lie. And, and I don't, look, I don't care about the shoes. I honestly don't care if people in the NFL kneel. I don't go to the NFL for my political advice. I don't care what they do. But I am annoyed that every single time one of these stories comes up, we're told that we're hate mongers. We're, we're doing the wrong thing. We don't understand. And then, you know, six months later, we find out we were right the entire time, and there's no apology show that airs on CNN. Don Lemon doesn't come out and say, wow, I blew that one. I mean, he's protesting shoes now. You guys were obviously right. There's n that moment doesn't occur. No. I'd, I'd like it to occur. Well, and how many sound bites do you have of Don Lemon saying that the border crisis is a manufactured crisis, yep. and then six mm -hmm. months later he said, it's, we have a crisis at the border. Right. Yeah, they right. never apologize for that. The NFL is a picture of America. Think about it. We used to be about these gladiators that put on their pads and marched out onto the field and bruised each other up and banged each other down. And there were mm -hmm. girls in short skirts who had pom poms, and it was all, it was, it was like, ah, gladiators. It was modern day gladiators. These days you can't sack the quarterback because you're going to get fined $25,000. There's all these little tiny things. You have the protest, you have the political statements that are going on. You know, America used to be very simple in, in the way we ran things, but now we, we're down yes. to, you know, Everything is roughing the passer these days. <laughs> right. Everything is roughing the passer. Yeah. You can't have a Betsy Ross flag. What are we going to do next? Go to Philadelphia and burn her house down? You know, it's a historic yeah. site. Burn it down. Yeah. Betsy was a yeah. racist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, this is, it's gotten to the point of sheer lunacy. Can you imagine if it was an LGBT flag on the back mm -hmm. of the shoe? Mm -hmm. And they said, we're recalling them. Because oh we're, we're recalling them. Does Kaepernick them. even play anymore? No. 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 Okay. He barely okay. played when he played. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to take his side a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? I, I don't think it was about the flag. I think he genuinely thinks that America is a racist, oppressive place, right? Mm -hmm. But it's about what the flag represents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his yeah. vision is that the flag represents oppression. Mm -hmm. The flag, I mean, it goes back to this fundamental delusion that America is this evil, horrible place. I mean, it's really the best place. It has the most opportunity for anyone of any stripe 
little flag reference there, <laughs> uh, to, to, to succeed, to make something of himself. The guy was making hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars no, in the no, NFL. No. I don't know how much he was making exactly. Now he's making millions of dollars on these Nike deals. Yeah. He doesn't even play football anymore. <laughs> right. And Nike's still acquiescing to his every whim. Oh, actually, I think the round stars are oppressive <laughs> to me personally. Yeah. So, like, why are we even listening to him? I will say the getting paid millions of dollars is the best kind of oppression. Oppression, right? <laughs> right? Really Sign me up. Really, I will be really, oppressed all day we long We are for that. such a racist country. It's <laughs> and, unbelievable. And I'm with you, like, in that, it's not the fabric, right? Like, I don't, no. I, the flag is the flag. You know, I've never been a guy who wants a, a, an amendment to stop flag burning. Like, I, you know, like, it is, it's a symbol of America, though. And, and it's, it's really the point. Yep. Right? He's trying to make this point that America isn't the place you're talking about. Yep. He's saying it's it's this oppressive place where it's you know all these terrible things are happening, and we should all believe that you know it's a common occurrence that all these terrible things are happening on racial lines mm -hmm. from police officers. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it is it, it's it's amazing to see that that is what gets folded to. Like I yeah. mean, these giant companies, multi-billion-dollar companies, fold to something like that where they don't they don't feel any pressure from mm -hmm. you know people who say that, you know what the flag represents something really great. Not to mention that this is like the ultimate feminist symbol, right? I mean, it's Betsy yeah. Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Really? And yeah. we don't even have to get into the sweatshops that yeah. make these shoes oh, yeah. mm -hmm. overseas and the kids that are doing it for pennies a day. But <laughs> there is no institutional racism in America. Right. There is not. You talk about large companies, Fortune 100 companies, Fortune 300 companies, now they have chief equality officers that are that are C-level executives to make sure that equality is happening in these businesses and in these companies. Those are strides. Remember, 60 years ago, we were in the middle of Jim Crow America, uh, Jim Crow South. It, it, these days, we have C-level executives making sure that people have the right opportunities that are there. It's, mm -hmm. it's, and you're exactly right in, in saying that because there is no, and people get mad at me when I come out with this and I say there is no institution. You can't name an institution in America that is racist. Now, there's organized racism. There's individual racism. Right. But there is no institutional racism in this country. Yeah. Or systemic. They call yeah. it systemic. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I defend his right to speak. Mm -hmm. sure. And I think the way he did it, it was provocative. It got attention. I mean, you know, fine. Okay, if he wants yeah. to kind of make a fool of himself, that's all right. <laughs> uh, he doesn't believe the same things I believe, but I will defend him for sure. for speaking because sure. I, I really respect speech so much. And and, and the, the, the speech that we have to protect is the ugliest kind of speech. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty ugly speech, yeah. right? But I think that we really do need to all kind of gather around the idea that he's wrong. You know, yeah. I think Americans yeah. need to look at what he's saying, yeah. say, are we really a racist country? Are we really a hateful country? And I don't think so. If you've ever traveled to other cultures around the world, racism is kind of like embedded in most cultures. Sure. Uh, you know, white American culture has said, no, we don't like that. Um, we want to be generous and respectful and uh, tolerant or whatever word you want to use you know, to describe it. But we want to be inclusive to everybody. And, and I think that that's a great thing. And we should be proud of that instead of like demonizing us for not stepping up to the absolute highest standard humanly possible where there's zero racists in America at all. And nobody has a racist, you know, any kind of little thing that comes up. They're like, oh, look how racist the country is. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, like we have the highest standard imaginable. We never well, figured well. off with uh, end this with uh, as compared to what right. your racist as country. compared as to compared what compared to what right. like what any other country on earth I think we do a pretty good job I mean they could, oh, really oh, do. what about Norway we I mean the one with like ninety eight percent white people that's the <laughs> that's what you want to compare the racism to it is important to say like as you compare to all of human history as you compare to how the earth is right now we're pretty freaking good at this yeah. and, and I know some Scandinavians. <laughs> <laughs> We're better. <laughs> All right, uh, border talk when we come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that last injection. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Chad, you said that uh, some Congresswomen visited some border facilities and there were some issues. Yeah, they went down to El Paso, and according to AOC, our favorite Congresswoman from. <laughs> Or as Nancy Pelosi calls her, a gl glass of water could have won in her district. <laughs> uh, she apparently, it's kind of blown up because there were the pictures of her screaming at the fence and crying at the fence and all of this impassioned pleas and the things going on. And so she came away and she said that she was, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, basically sexually harassed. There were, there were physical threats against her, sexual threats against her on the part of border guards. And she said that there were, there were migrant families who were being forced to drink out of the toilet and, and these type of issues. Um, I'm going to take things that are not true for 500 years. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So I've been to the border numerous times. I've been to many of these facilities. And it's ludicrous. Tom Holman, who is the former 
director of ICE came out today and said, this is absolutely insane. Here are the pictures. Mm -hmm. There's a sink with a, with a mm -hmm. water line running to it. And here's a toilet with a water line running to it. This doesn't make sense. If they're, if they're drinking, she says, there's no running water. Well, why, how are they drinking out of the toilet? See, it just, does, <laughs> it just falls in on itself. It's a house of cards. And, and then Samuel Rodriguez, who is the head of the Hispanic Christian uh, organization, the pastor, and took a group of pastors down there to the same place. Uh, you know, and he said, I'm appalled, because he was mad. Yeah. He said, if this is true, and, and he went down, mm. he advised... Uh, uh, Barack Obama, he, George W. George Bush, Biden. as well as Trump on immigration. He's come out on record as saying that Trump may be the guy who gets immigration reform taken care of. Yeah. He went with a group of pastors, all Hispanic, and took a look, and he said, I'm appalled at the misinformation that has mm. come out of AOC's mouth. She is flat out lying. But here's the issue. Here's why this matters. You're seeing from the leftists. I don't even call them liberals anymore. I miss liberals. I really mm. do. I miss classical liberals. They're leftists. Their, mm. their agenda is yep. off the deep end. I've said this before on this show, and I'll remind you that this is what this is. Lying doesn't matter anymore as long as the agenda is accomplished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay to misinform, to sleight of hand, and to out and out tell untruths as long as the agenda is accomplished. The ends and that's exactly, justify the means. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what we're seeing happening here, Chris. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, could you imagine a world? Could you imagine a scenario in which AOC walked in there and didn't come out screaming and shouting no, and no. talking about no. how awful everything no. was? Yeah. You know, it's like... Chuck E. Cheese in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Well, the ball pit was disgusting. Uh, there was a booger on a ball! <laughs> Those kids were laughing. <laughs> so totally inappropriate. I, um, I do want to... I, I want to get your thoughts, but... Yeah. Because we're discussing her reaction, oh. I want to go ahead and, and play her Look interview, up. her short interview when she's leaving the facility. She's very passionate. Very watch. Upset. There's abuse in these, in these facilities. There's abuse. This was them on their best behavior, and they put them in a room with no running water, and these women were being told by CBP officers to drink out of the toilet. They were drinking water out of the toilet. And that was them knowing what a congressional visit was coming. That was, this is CBP on their best behavior, telling people to drink out of the toilet. Did you see somebody actually do that? Did you, see, did you see them actually do that? Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta go. I, I can't answer anymore. Questions. I've gotta roll up my window so angrily. <laughs> well, and I did see um, uh, a picture come out that she did confirm that it was what she saw was that they have the units with the sink on top of the toilet. Right. Which really, if you think about it, if she's as environmentally friendly as she says right. she is, it's isn't that the better choice? <laughs> right. Right? right? Like you have to pump it or whatever you have to do that you're not just going to turn on the faucet full blast. Right. She should be supportive of these things. Was that an SUV she was riding in? Wow. She flew down to the border and then got an SUV. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hybrid. <laughs> uh, on the subject of AOC, uh, I know, Chad, you referenced this, but she had these uh, pictures surfaced just recently of her from, what, a year ago that she was at the border, and she was very upset. She was very upset, uh, and she was yelling about all of the abuses going on. Let's watch. We have no right to stand for injustice. Thoughts? Well, the fact that she doesn't know how to pronounce abuses, <laughs> abuses. aside, <laughs> let's just ignore that. Uh, I was having a hard time with that, too, I gotta say. I mean, I, I, I too, am outraged at the emptiness of that, <laughs> of that rocky area in yeah. which she was screaming. Uh, that was horrifying. I mean, there was a couple of cars there, yeah. Yeah. and I think there were some police officers, <laughs> if you see from the other angle. Um, yeah, what is she screaming about? The, the photos of her, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, crying. Uh, the, yeah, there you go. The um, the photographer said that. Um, okay, so there, so there was this idea that oh, actually, there, she wasn't in front of a facility where she could actually see the the you know the immigrants. In fact, that she was at a parking lot. Well, it turns out she wasn't at a parking lot. She was like at the gate that was like a street that went to <laughs> the facility or something like that. So she wasn't actually at a parking lot. She was just at a gate that looked into like nothingness. It was essentially like a parking <laughs> lot. So yeah. sorry, we got that detail wrong, guys. <laughs> But yeah, she was looking at essentially nothing, and the guy said, well, it was just the idea of the facility that made her up. So she could have literally been in Paris thinking about immigrants and upset. You know, she could have literally been anywhere in the world. Yeah. It didn't have to be at that fence. I think they specifically took it at this sort of angle so that you couldn't tell what was on the other side Absolutely. and that people would imagine that there was like starving children over there or something like that but yeah so i mean ba basically the it's a propaganda photo you know it yeah. was it was taken i think before she was elected right yes so it was i think she it was, was campaigning look she's a sympathetic good person yeah you know it was one of those she's a pretty good actress <laughs> she was, yeah, yeah I, almost like she was acting I, almost almost, like almost. <laughs> i also would like acting. to bring up uh i saw a, a follow-up tweet from her, you know, I just left the border facilities and they were physically and sexually threatening to me. And she yeah. said, think about this, the human rights atrocities going on um, at the border. A woman slipped her, um, they had to check their phones, but a woman slipped her a, a little bottle, a little bag that said shampoo on it. Mm -hmm. And she told her, she said, it says shampoo, but the woman told me that this is all they give women to wash their entire body, oh nothing God. else. So this is soap not designed for skin, it's designed for hair. <laughs> Some <laughs> women's that. hair was falling out, others had gone 15 days without taking a shower. She is an embarrassment. I mean, it really is pathetic. I mean, she really is. I, it's, well, it, it's, I don't know how Democrats put up with this. I mean, like, she's, she, she's taking all of the air out of the room, right? Like, she is completely swallowing the entire national conversation for this party that's trying to run 29,000 right. presidential candidates. <laughs> and they, no, no one has the balls to come out and say anything about it. No one has the balls to come out and say, like, look, we all know that you did not get sexually abused as a member of Congress <laughs> walking through a facility. We all know that's not true. Every person on earth right. knows that's not true. Uh, but we're supposed to stand by and act as if it is. Well, there's, well, there's three possibilities with what, what she's saying here about the like the women drinking out of the toilet and all that. Either she's right, you know, that's a possibility. Sure. Um, not sure if I'm going for that yeah. one, but that's uh, you know, you never know. Uh, there's the possibility that somebody literally told her that. I mean, somebody to use yes. an AOC word literally told her <laughs> yes. that, like you know, um, that this was happening. <laughs> That's um, but, that's but, a plausible but think one. about but think about it. She's pretty famous. She's a pretty famous congresswoman. So if somebody, an immigrant, thinks, "Oh, you know what? If I can get this congresswoman on my side, uh, maybe I can get a little special treatment here." Mm -hmm. uh, hey, AOC, uh, listen. You know what they're doing to me here? This is pretty crazy. And that's great ammunition for her. Yeah. So she doesn't even question it. She's just like. Great, that's an awesome story. I'm kind of going to use that when I'm screaming and crying in the car and rolling up the window angrily. Uh, and th the other option, obviously, is that she just make, made this up, right? Like she had somebody in her camp came up with this, oh, this, you know, what, what do we yeah. say is going on over there? Uh, when you leave the camp, tell them that they, they said this for you or something like that. And we have really no way of knowing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with that last option. It's, I mean, oh, you know, it's yeah. a little bit cynical, I know. Yeah. But we got we, we to gotta take a break. We'll yeah. be back. I think it's probably option B, right? Like someone said something like, oh, yeah, I have yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Chris, before we go to overtime, tell everyone where they can find you. Well, I'm on YouTube. You just look uh, for Mr. Reagan. I've got a Twitter, Mr. Reagan USA. You can find me there. And uh, I Lots make of good stuff on your YouTube. I make videos. Lots yeah. of good stuff. <laughs> we'll good. see you in overtime.